What's up guys? This is uh, Alex Montano. This is the first vlog that I'm officially doing. Um, a lot of you people have uh, seen my stories. You've followed me throughout all my travels and all my experiences throughout the world and all the funny stuff that I come across. And um, you were telling me, oh, you need to do a YouTube show. You need to do a, a reality TV show. You should be on Netflix. You should have your own show. And the thing is that I've, I've wanted to do these vlogs for a while. It's been years now. Only until recently, I'm like, yo, I gotta start working on all the stuff that, that, that I have pending, but I've been wanting to do these vlogs not to entertain people or to make them laugh or, or to enjoy, even though obviously I appreciate all the comments and all the people that tell me keep posting, even though I post like crazy, but I've been trying to do vlogs about helping people make their dreams come true helping you know people achieve their dreams the last you know people that i've hired i've, I've always asked them what do you want to do in five years like uh i want to know what your goals are i want to know what your goals are in order for me to know oh you're, you're wondering where i have a pencil i have a little cheat sheet of what i'm going to be talking about since it's my uh first uh my first vlog and it's gonna be pretty long, so I might have to upload it to YouTube. Instagram might not uh, take it. So the whole thing has been to educate people and help people start their businesses, make their ideas a reality, you know, help them succeed, help them change their life, help them do. Holy shit. I was gonna put my cheat sheet in my old phone, but I just drew it on a pencil because my phone was charging. I had to charge it. I got a fucking ember alert, how weird. This phone doesn't even have a, on a, a GSM. So the whole thing is that I, um, I've been trying to help people make their dreams come true. And um, I get a lot of people that call me, they ask me, they send friends, hey, my friend's, uh, you know, he's an entrepreneur, you know, he, he does shit in China, um, you know, talk to him. And I know a lot of the times it's hard for me to get back to some people when I'm traveling I miss a lot of calls, I, I, a lot of emails, I don't, I don't get to check them because I'm always so wild and crazy, like visiting all these factories and, and learning about new materials and processes and it's, it's, it's tough sometimes, but I've been wanting to do this because I've, I wanna give back, I wanna help, I get, I get pleasure from helping people succeed and, and making them happy. And then in turn, it makes me happy, so it's, it's actually a win-win. Some people think I might help them for them, but I actually do it for myself. Um, there's a couple of things that I want to talk about and that's why I put them on this uh, on this cheat sheet because I'm gonna start doing a lot more of these videos but this is gonna be basically the one introducing myself to everybody so I want to talk about my goals I want to talk about you know different things about you know words hurt that was the original idea for this video was words hurt I'm gonna give you a couple of examples on why uh, words are so powerful or words can hurt and uh, and uh, affect people's uh, future you know so, for example, when I when I first when I first started my business, I started my business right out of high school. Um, right when I was 18 years old, I'm like, hey, I'm gonna be a graphic designer. I'm gonna be the best graphic designer there is. I'm gonna have my own ad agency, and I'm gonna kill it. I'm gonna be a millionaire by 23. That's what I said. Um, that was when I was 18 years old, and my friends, which by the way, disclaimer. I could have done a thousand things differently in my life and I would have been at a completely different position if I would have applied myself to a specific thing like most people ask me to do, but I wouldn't change my life like at all for one thing any different. I've enjoyed this entire process and this entire like ups and downs with my company and my, and my ventures and my friends. Like it's been so great and I've gotten to meet so many people that I call family, so many friends that if I would have done things differently, like people always tell me to do, None of this, what I have right now would exist because I would have been at another level. Maybe I would have been in Dubai or in fucking, I don't know, like, like, like living the dream somewhere else if I really applied myself. So um, that's another thing I want to talk about is the, the, the wild misunderstood mind. Like, you know, Steve Jobs got fired from Apple because they thought he was too crazy and too wild and he couldn't focus. And he was what got Apple to what it was. They ended up having to hire him later because they couldn't do it without him. I'm not, I'm not trying to compare myself to, to Steve Jobs. I'm just trying to say that uh, when, when a wild mind is misunderstood, um, it, doesn't, it doesn't allow for people to see where the true 
logic behind it, why things happen the way they do, why you act the way you do, why you will say things or act things or do some things that they might not understand. It's just because they're not seeing your your point of view. They're only seeing their point of view and they're saying, hey, you know, like this guy's traveling all over the world or here busting our ass. Like I'm working and I've been working this entire time to provide a better life, not just for myself, but even for the people around me, for my employees. I've I've taught people how to design, how to run machines, how to be self-sufficient, how to open up their own businesses. I've I've literally have had at least three or four friends, even my sister started a printing company, a successful printing company with all my resources and all my learnings and all my teachings. My, my good friend Matias started his company like nine years ago with printing and one of my employees now, Mike, started his own business and I even helped him out. Uh, I was doing the printing for him. Um, my sister opened up her own, own, her own printing company. I think I already mentioned that. Um, and like that, uh, 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 tons of other people that I've taught them how to, you know, create money, how to, you know, hey, buy this from here or let me sell this to you at this price and you sell it for this price. Shampoo, one of my employees, the guy who used to work for me uh, a couple of months ago, now he has his own business. He's like running his own business out of my shop and he's sending me cash, you know, like on the daily, like everything that he's printing, you know, I don't even control what he's doing. He has full access to my shop and, you know, people think that's crazy, but that's, that's what makes me different. Like a lot of people are like, yo, you have, you give everybody access to your warehouse. By the way, if you're wondering where I'm at, I'm upstairs in my warehouse. This is like my little, my little game room. Um, the cats are fighting in the back. Mimi! Sorry, not Mimi. Pandy. So, um, there's a lot of things that I do for the people and they might not, they might not see it, but they will see it. You know, like the, the way that I see things, obviously everybody has their own vision, everybody has their own story, but everything that I do is for the betterment of not just myself, but everybody around me. Like all the resources that I have, I'm always willing to share it. You know, I give people, you know, where I buy my things in China, where I buy my supplies here, the people that I used to do the printing, it doesn't matter. The more the merrier, and I've, and I've helped and I will continue to help till the end of me, you know, helping people how to, how to, um, be able to generate money and start their own businesses and and create a, a, a not a successful but a, a happy lifestyle like to me i don't need like the 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 crazy you know cars or like anything i've been driving my van my 2013 work van that i bought for business for the last four years my range rover's uh transmission blue and i never even fixed it it was like a 1500 dollars spend and it's just been sitting outside i don't even drive it i drive a work van everywhere I go because the to me it's not about oh monetary things or this this and that I love traveling I like spending time with friends I like you know exploring new things learning new procedures how to run new machines how to manufacture how to like you know we have so many things going on right now we have a um, you know like we're launching a custom brand uh, me and Chris were doing this you know the high pack I'm sure you've heard of it I have the Fire app. I launched an, an, an app on the App Store about two weeks ago. I haven't told everybody because I'm still trying to uh, perfect some little bugs, some little misspellings that we have. And I want to perfect the app before we really launch it out there. Um, there's so many, uh, so many things that are happening, you know, simultaneously. Um, I have this kid, Albert, which is a, a, a Shopify like mastermind, moving in on Monday. Um, right now June, on June 2nd or June 3rd uh, and it's it's crazy how everything is coming like organically I was just in Hong Kong recently and like this guy literally dropped a like a multi-million dollar offer on my lap and this guy lives in my backyard and he just he, he gave us a, a, an opportunity to work with this company that's in the S&P 100 and the guy's like, yo, like, we need you guys. You guys are the experts finding these products, these, these trending products in China. Like, he loves the high pack idea. We're going to put it in the, in, the, in, the, in the platform to test it out. And all of these things are coming. Like, I wasn't even supposed to be at that meeting. My friend Alex that I met at the airport, he manufactures products also in China. And uh, his dad has been manufacturing products and in, in, uh, selling them worldwide for over like 20 something years. Maybe it's like 13 years. I don't know. But I met this kid at the airport and I saw he had a, a skateboard and I'm like, yo, I'm trying to make, I'm trying to bring electric skateboards also from China. What do you do? And I was like, oh, I just came from China. This is my skateboard. 
and the kid is, was like 20 years old or he was like 18 years old and I'm like bro you're 18 years old and you're already like in China like it took me 32 years to, to, to or 31 years to fly out to China now this kid is already manufacturing products at 18 so it blew my mind so I meet him I go to a to a to a, a, a meeting like in the middle of Hong Kong that I wasn't even supposed to be at and all of a sudden I'm part of this three million dollar deal that might happen it wasn't even, it's not a three million dollar deal I'm just saying my vision of what it is in one year could get up to three million dollars that's what I what I calculated and and other things that are just falling naturally just because of the of the progression of things uh, of how you know how random life is where all these things come out of nowhere like I've been looking for somebody to run marketing to work on my personal brand I never post on social media I only post on stories and I'm supposed to be working on my personal brand I'm a firm believer that social media and your social media presence your 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 avatar your your social image is one of the most important factors in a 2019 person's life um, I've seen so many people become extremely successful have amazing careers by applying themselves to social media and creating that content all the time and if you look at my Instagram posts the last third the third last post like three pictures ago was from November like eight months ago and my last picture wasn't even a, a picture I uploaded a video that was motivation inspiration about a cop about uh, oh no here comes the popo or oh or no the popo I don't know whatever um, the point is that I've been trying to find somebody to help me go online how to do all the the brand awareness, the brand improvement, the brand establishment uh, on social media. I mean, I know I do stories, but I'm like, I'm like a very low, uh, I guess, traffic. Like, I don't have that many, that many followers, you know. And I, and I kind of feel like the thing is that I haven't wanted followers for uh, for my funny posts. I've been wanting to have followers for for teaching, for learning. You know, I'm 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 starting a nonprofit called make America make again or make America manufacture again because for at least five years already I've had this plan where uh, um, I want to have kids come into my uh, into my into my print shop downstairs and I want to have adults and teenagers come from high school and I want them to learn about manufacturing about producing about designing about coding about robotics because that's what the future is going to everybody's complaining that oh robots are taking our our, our jobs but that's exactly what is supposed to happen. Once you have a robot doing your job, you can just relax on the beach and chill. Because the robot is, is cooking your food, the, the robot is doing your job, the robot is taking care of the house, it's cleaning, it's cooking. The robots, This that, that sounds like already like too far ahead, but I kind of want, back to my point before I digressed about robots in the future. Um, what I want to do is I want to have kids and teenagers and adults come in here into my into my warehouse into my production facilities I have over half a million dollars in machinery down down there I have two laser cutters a laser a co2 laser engraver uh, uh, a fiber laser engraver we have a CNC router we have a channel bender um, we have uh, direct print UV flatbed hybrid which can also also print on rolls we have uh, two uh, eco solvent printers we have laminators we have uh, slitters, we have 3D printers, we have uh, another little mini CNC and a little mini laser and there's so many cool toys and gadgets and things that can not only teach you how to do a trade in order for you to apply that to a real life job or even a real life business. I have, I have these products that I brought from China that are literally a business in a box where if you invest $5,000, even $3,000, you can start a business that can generate you easy $500 to $1,000 a month. I know that that doesn't really be like, oh, what's $500, what's $1,000? What I'm saying is that you can have a $1,000, uh, sorry, a $3,000 investment and you can make it back in three months. And this is something that a kid can operate. A 15-year-old kid can teach himself how to design on lynda.com and start making these things in a two day, it's a two day learning curve. Two days, you're producing products and selling them online, selling them to your community, and a kid that's 15 years old can be making his own money. So that's, 
I digressed again. I'm supposed to bring people here to the shop. I want to do it once a month or once every two weeks, once every week. I don't know. The idea was to bring them here, show them how the machine works, do kind of like a maker's fair kind of thing. I'll have all the machines printing. I'll have the lasers cutting. I'll have the 3D printers printing so that people can see and at least spark their mind, spark their imagination and 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 to try to get them to get into it you know my my idea behind all of this you know project that i thought about launching five years ago about it's been longer than that because cubate has been going on for a while but um we we finally launched our first project which is a fire app through the incubator i've been trying to do an incubator for years our friend rob from new york was like yo tell me i'm down to do the incubator i'll throw money but like he hasn't moved here and literally we've been slow stepping but we already have the first project completed for uh for the incubator and what i want to do is i want to help i want to incubate people's ideas um i want to help them accomplish their goals if you're like oh i want to launch a product in china i want to be the incubator for your project but 100 percent, i'm telling you right now I need to believe in the project in order for me to even try to find a way to to manufacture it. I need to believe in the project. Sometimes, uh, and don't get me wrong, people might not believe in your project at all. Look at Uber. Nobody believed in Uber, and, and it's a fucking multi-billion dollar uh, company. Sorry for that. Um, but, by the way, I curse a lot. I've been trying not to curse because this is a more generic uh, for the public video that's going to be seen a lot. So, I might have to bleep that out. Um, so the, the entire thing is that if, um, what was I getting at? Oh, so incubating, uh, people say that if I don't believe a hundred percent, if I don't believe a hundred percent in your idea, um, it's going to be tough for me to try to help you because I don't push anything that I don't believe in. I don't do favors for you. Like, I'll tell you like, oh, I think your idea is shit and I don't really think it's gonna go anywhere. But don't get me wrong, I might pass in an idea sort of like Ashton Kutcher passed on Uber twice where he should have invested and he didn't invest like an idiot. Uber took off and, and was a huge hit. I might think your idea is trash and you might have the next Instagram. You know, like the thing is that I'm already 36 years old. I don't really know. I don't know what the next big thing is, so, but I do have an idea of what could be it. So if you have a good idea, and I think it's a good idea, I will 100% help you, and I will not charge you. I'm not trying to, you know, like charge a consulting fee or anything. I want products to succeed, and I wanna say, hey, I was able to help that kid, or that young girl, or that entrepreneur make his dream a reality. I called my friend uh, uh, recently, Gina, I'm like, hey, you need to come over here and we need to talk because I have all these ideas for businesses and I think, you know, she's always been in the entrepreneur world. She's opened like three restaurants, a bakery, and I I'm, I'm always inspired by people that push, that push themselves and, and literally jump the gun. This, this, this girl and her husband have like four kids or five kids. They have four kids and they've delved into restaurant after bakery and, and they give it their all. They even had a show uh, on TV uh, where they were like losing the bakery because running a business is crazy. It's not it's not easy But I've learned so much so much from uh, from from running a business. I literally uh, back to what I was saying I I Stopped my business and in, in, when I was 18 years old. I started a business right out of high school I knew I didn't want to work for anybody. I listened to everybody. That's why I, I have words can hurt here Everybody's like no, are you crazy? You gotta have a backup plan. What if your business fails? You should never go into a business if you think you're gonna fail, because whether you think you're gonna fail or you think you're gonna succeed, you're right in both ways. If you go into a business just even thinking that you're gonna fail, you might fail, and that's the problem. When I go into a project, when I go into an idea, there can be one ounce of sweat in my body that thinks that that idea might fail. When I think and I, and I envision my ideas, when I, I digest ideas, like sometimes they're clear, sometimes they take development, and sometimes they take time to, to, to really uh, flourish, you know? So when I delve into an idea, it's, uh, it's, 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 there can't be one ounce of me that thinks that it's not gonna happen, you know? Um, my friend Roly came to me uh, about 10 months ago when we started making the app, it's taken 10 months to make. He came out to me and he's like, yo, we should do this app, this and this and that, that'd be dope, whatever. It didn't even take five seconds. I've been studying the market. I've been seeing what, 
what's 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 really causing um, uh, like impact in the community and apps that reduce friction, apps that that, that help consumers figure out a problem that's in, in, in your everyday life, those apps will succeed. So when he came to me with this idea, it was, a, it was literally a copy of an app, but for a completely different market. And when he told me, it literally took five minutes and I was like, yo, we're doing this. Can I be your partner? I told him, because it was his idea. And I'm like, yo, can we be your partner? And he's like, yeah, let's do this. And he's like, yo, 50-50. My friend had told plenty of his friends and everybody was like, oh, but what about the insurance? Oh, but no, uh, if that app, if that app uh, would, it, is really successful, it would be out by now. Oh no, you know, that would exist already. It does not matter. Uber is worth billions and Lyft came out after and it's still worth billions. There's always gonna need uh, competition. You're always gonna need, you know, like there's another app uh, like ours already. There's two apps like ours already, but none, it has all the features of, of what we're doing. So. The focus is whenever you do something, it might not be an invention that you made, like the backpack. I didn't design the backpack. I am making it better. And when we launch it, it's gonna be a, a product that has 16 more features than the original uh, concept design. We were the original manufacturers of the first production run of the backpacks, but you know we didn't actually design it. It was a design house in, in China that I found at one of these shows. Um, but again, I digress. Uh, I was talking about the app. So when, when my friend came to me and he told me about the app, in five minutes, I was in 100% ready to, to put and devote some of my time into it. And the very next day we had a quote uh, from my developers. I, I told them, listen, I wanna make this app, but for this industry. And uh, it took them like, I don't know, like four or five days, but they gave us a proposal. And I looked at my friend, I'm like, yo, I don't care what it costs, we're making this because this can be a, a humongous uh, opportunity. Um, so, what was I talking about uh, before fire? Oh, so how words hurt. Sorry, I'm jumping like back and forth with this. This is kind of like a, it's a big investment. We're already 22 minutes in and I'm not gonna chop this up. I'm not gonna edit it. I'm literally gonna, even if there's a blooper, I'm just gonna continue throughout the entire thing and, um, and, and not edit it, forget it. So, um, I was talking about how words hurt. When, when I left high school, I wanted to start my own business. I started my own business. It was called Lex Graphics. Um, and I started doing designs for people. And people said, hey, you know, like, you can't do that. How are you gonna start your own business? What if it fails? All that negative connotation that everybody always gives. So they're like, oh, um, what about, um, what about if it fails? Do you need a plan B? Do you need to go to college? So fine, I decided to go to college four years wasted of my life because I didn't learn anything in college. I tell everybody this, my brother's like, yeah, you did learn in college. Everything that I learned and everything that I have learned since then and since before then, when I learned, when I taught myself about computers, I have always been self-taught. The problem with colleges today and school in general is that you have to go to the slowest, you have to go at the pace of the slowest student in class Otherwise, you're, you're being uh, uh, unfair to the, to the slowest learner because they don't understand. So what happens is the people who are advanced, um, they get bored. You get disinterested. So what I would do in college is I would get the syllabus. And for my three-month program, I would learn the entire three-month program in like a week or two weeks. And then I would continue to build on, on, on what I had learned. So I would surpass all my other classes. Like I actually went to my Photoshop class in, in college and I was actually teaching the professor how to do things because she had forgotten. She, she wasn't even familiar. She was teaching things that took 10 steps to do in Photoshop when I could do it in three. And she's like, well, yeah, there's so many ways that you can do things. Teach the fast way. The, the thing is that the school is antiquated. It's slow. It goes at a very slow pace and it's hard for them to get the the, the, the new curriculums of, of what's new in the market, what's hot, who's the expert right now. The internet and, 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 the, and the world is changing at such a fast pace that the only way to have a proper uh, teaching, a, pro a proper teaching environment is if it's a, a global, this is a wild idea by the way, is a global shared community uh, where everybody can teach each other the new trends. And what you do is you record your video. Let's say uh, a new app came out or a new programming language and, uh, or a new Photoshop and people don't know how to use it. 
So I would spend my time teaching people how to do it and I could get paid a dollar every time somebody uh, get, uh, gets, um, gets help from my video. If my video helped your life, yo, pay me a dollar. You know, just out of respect. Like that way the education system will be, people will be like, I think there's actually uh, Udemy or there's this, there's Skillshare or something. There's this company where uh, college professors will record their class or their training or they'll teach you how to do electricity or how to run a machine like a CNC router, which I wanna do that video. And they'll record the video teaching people how to do it. So you only have to do it once. You don't have to teach people all the time. You record the video once and now the entire world, obviously people that have internet, will have access to your education video. Meaning people should be able to learn free from you and if they feel like they got value from your video, hey, let me pay this person, you know, $20, $25. I'm gonna make a, a promise that I'm gonna give this person 10% of all my earnings because everything that I'm earning right now is because of him so people should be giving back to the teachers like I'm forever grateful to uh, Anthony Ferrante a teacher that's already retired um, the guy like when I went to go visit him I don't know maybe like a year or two ago it makes me cry just thinking about it because this teacher uh, Anthony Ferrante I talked about about this in Facebook a while back this teacher saw a talent in me with design when I was in my junior year of high school. Um, I started messing with computers, obviously since I was a little kid, but I never had access to a computer. The first time I had a computer was at 16 years old. My mom bought me a computer and it was like the wildest thing I ever got. It was the best tool. And I haven't stopped learning about uh, computers and programs and machinery since. Um, but I remember that this, this teacher changed my life. If I could, I, I do wanna give back to him. I actually, I'm gonna do it uh, this week. I'm gonna contact him and I'm gonna try to, uh, oh shit. shit, sorry, this thing disconnected. Um, I'll just hold this like this. So I'm gonna try to, uh, I'm gonna try to, uh, to uh, I'm gonna buy him a trip or something, give something back to him because um, he did a lot for me and uh, he literally changed my life. So he saw that I was uh, very interested when he was teaching uh, how to do things in Photoshop and his computer was the only one that had it. Like none of the, uh, Photoshop is so expensive. Let me fix this thing. Sorry. All right, here we go. Oh. All right, so um, this guy saw that uh, I was very, uh, um, interested in Photoshop and what he was doing and what you can make with Photoshop. So he's like, hey, I'm gonna give you this uh, program so you can install it on one of your computers, even though like we're only supposed to have it on one computer, but whatever, just so you can play with it on your computer. I got into Photoshop and I started learning every tool, every filter, every button, every shortcut, every everything, every, I learned that program like not even like the palm of my hand. I know that program better than the ABCs. Um, so he saw my interest in it. And at the time the program cost like $600. Um, and he literally risked his job because he told me, hey, Alex, um, I need to talk to you after class. And um, after class finished, I thought I was in trouble, but I hadn't done anything, so I wasn't even worried. I was like, yo, this guy's confusing me for somebody else. Um, when I said after class, he told me, listen, Alex, I see uh, a, a very possible, a very promising talent in you with Photoshop, and um, I'm not supposed to be doing this, but he gave me a copy. He copied the CD for me, and he's like, don't ever tell anybody about this because I will get fired, because he was giving me pirated software. Um, which I ended up buying, by the way, because since it makes me money, like everybody gets pirated uh, Adobe software, I actually pay for Adobe because Adobe makes me money. And even when I was in college, I ended up buying the, the Adobe uh, C Creative Suite for like $900, I remember it was at the time. And people were like, oh, you're crazy, I can get you the program for free. And it wasn't about that. It was at the time that I graduated from high school, Photoshop 
learning Photoshop from high school illegally with an illegally downloaded disc. I'm, I'm admitting to pirating software, by the way, um, while I was in high school. Um, the fact that I had access to pirated software, it was, it was an official copy. It was actually a license from the, from the school. So if you think about it, I was using it for school purposes and then I bought my own version when I was in college. So technically it wasn't illegal. It was just a duplicate license. So he risked his job and he told me, Alex, if anybody finds out that I gave you this software, I can get fired because this is school property. I'm not supposed to be sharing it like that. But that guy got me my first job, got me my second job, got me my right out of high school. I had started my business because of that guy, because by learning Photoshop, I used to do designs in Word, in, in, in Word document uh, with like little, you know, modify the text. I did a flyer for my uncle once in Word. I thought I was a designer and I was a freaking clown. I'm not a designer. Um, but then I started learning Photoshop and I saw the, 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 the knowledge in this. That's why when I was a senior in high school, the next year, I had already learned so much in just one year that I'm like, yo, I'm gonna open up my own agency because I'd already had, I already had clients paying me to do their websites. I had client paying me to, to do their logo. And um, I was already getting business and I was 17, 18 years old. I had just had one year of experience in a computer and I was already generating money. So I started my business and then I ended up closing it because I listened to my friends. Here's Luna, my little rescue dog. She showed up on my birthday last year. Let me show you, Luna. Hey, Luni. Say hi. She's a good girl. So, okay, so that ended abruptly because I was showing you guys Luna and then I pressed on the power button and it stopped, uh, it stopped recording. So I listened to my friends from high school and I listened to my family and I ended up going to college four years. I think it was wasting time, whatever. I already knew about graphic design by the time I went to college there's nothing they could they could teach me when I saw the curriculum I was like yo this entire four-year program I learned it in one year by myself looking at tutorials online and looking at uh, at videos online so it ended up being that um, I went for a different career to get a four-year degree in interactive media design which is a bachelor's uh, degree I got my four-year degree um, I never used it because one month before graduating college I opened up my printing company and I still have it till today. It's been 13 years that I have the printing company. And I literally just told my boss at the time while I was working in college, yo, this is my last week. I graduated in a month and I'm starting my business now. I'm not even waiting till I graduated. I, grad I, I started my business uh, a week before, a month before graduating. And here I am now. Um, but what I was saying is that, uh, oh, words matter. Um, that ended up, wow, this video is like very back and forth. Um, sorry about that. I'm, I'm going to try to put a table of contents and, and uh, skip chapter and go back to <laughs> the original topic. Um, but yeah, that's, that's literally what my plan is. Let me see from this list what else I have to talk to. Misunderstood vision, wild mind. That's something that like, uh, you know, I think I already talked about that. Finding passion. I want to help people find their passion. Um, I know that everybody says like, oh, do what you love and you never work a day in your life. It's bullshit and it's true. Um, like if your passion is, uh, you know, like playing with dogs, you might not be able to make a living with playing dogs or you could have a, a WAGS uh, thing or like something with animals or whatever, but you're still gonna have to work. The idea is find your passion. If your passion is to play basketball, if your passion is to play golf, maybe try not working at golf because then you're gonna get tired of it. But work at something that's gonna allow you to play golf as much as you possibly can because that's your passion. So if you're a caddy for half a day and then you have friends the next of the day or you can pay or you can get paid by somebody to be a companion caddy for them but you're still playing with them for a discounted price, then you can play golf for a living. You can literally play golf for a living or if you like fishing, you know, do a fishing charter, put your, you know, your, your, your knowledge, your exp expert experience on our, on our app, on the fire app, which is find your recreational expert and, and, and take people fishing and you're fishing and you're still making mo money. Like look at this guy, the mutton man in Miami, he, he charges $500 a day and he's booked until September. The guy is, has like the, the, the craziest, uh, um, like, uh, 
schedule and he's five hundred dollars a day, that's that's what fifteen thousand uh, dollars a month. That's that's insane, and he's booked till then. So people like that, that if you have a passion, you have a knowledge. There's people. My my employee shampoo. He was like, yo, I wish I had five hundred dollars. Uh, uh, Mr. Mutton or, or Miami Mutton Man just got a cancellation and he has tomorrow free uh, to go fishing and I think like that there's there's a million people that can be doing uh, what they're really passionate about and they're just not doing it they're doing the 9 to 5 because there's no other choice because they don't know any different so finding your passion is very important and once you know your passion then it's a lot easier to find out what you have to do in order to be able to afford the luxury of enjoying your passion. Like I love traveling and I love sleeping. So I sleep a lot and I travel a lot and I work crazy hours like the rest of the day. Like when everybody leaves uh, uh, and everybody leaves the warehouse, I'm downstairs, I'll organize shit, I'll, I'll fix things, I'll come up with new ideas. I'll start you know, implementing new projects or, or, or talking to the factory in China or buying new machines or doing research on new machines like the, the fact the, the fact that we have all these machines here available in our warehouse we have all these different machines is because of the of the time and dedication that I have put into into doing the research of understanding of, of breathing uh, this lifestyle in and out in order to be able to give access to all these people like there's not one machine in my warehouse that I do not know how to operate and that I do, I, I do not know how to, how to run and I probably even know how to fix it. You know, like uh, I know how to use every machine in my office and not a lot of owners can say that they know how to use every machine in their office. Like I have people like, oh no, I only run the printer, I don't run the cutter, that's somebody else. Or oh no, I only do the designs, I don't do everything. I can do 360% like even like I don't even know about accounting but I'm sure that if I put my mind to it I'd probably be able to do it but um, with that being said what was I trying to get to at with that point um, oh about knowing your passion so uh, working towards it um, yeah so that's what I was saying that my passion is sleeping and traveling so I sleep I, I, I do the resources for the for the machines and the projects and um, uh, that's what my passion is it's growing my my goals are so big and so far beyond reach of what anybody's imagination is. Like my goal is not even to make money. My goal is to have like a like an Iron Man uh, um, dream factory life. Like I want to be able to build robots and build like flight suits. And I, I actually told my brother about a year ago that I wanted to make that hoverboard with the with the turbines, where that guy like that 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 guy from. Uh, Zapata racing that flies with that that uh, turbine thing. I wanted to make a copy of that turbine thing and fly in the thing it, because it's it's so amazing to me. So I'm always looking at new gadgets and new things and new machines and new processes. I just put a a, 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 a deposit for this badass laser machine. It's like over a hundred grand and and I've been wanting to buy this metal laser for over a year now. But I've been like slow stepping. Like we've had the money in the bank to like. Uh, uh, invest into these machines but my partner's a little bit hesitant sometimes to like get into these like new ventures like he hasn't wanted me to buy the lasers and the benders but I buy them because I know that they're gonna benefit and after you know he understands it you know but since he doesn't know how these machines operate and how much how they can produce money for you um, uh, it's crazy but that's that's the way the 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 cookie crumbles I guess like I literally threw away yesterday 13 years after I bought it I threw away yesterday the first machine I ever bought in conjunction with another machine. There was two machines that I bought at first. It was a plotter and it was a heat press uh, because I wanted to do sweatmyshirt.com, which was like a, um, um, like a customizable T website that they have a tons of them, tons of them now. But this was in 2005 when I had the idea of doing Sweat My Shirt and because of listening to people, words hurt. Because of listening to people, just like I listened to them about uh, going to college, I listened to my family when they told me, don't do print house and, and, and sweat my shirt at the same time, focus on print house. 
and I only focused on print house. And if I would have listened to them, I would have never opened up hype makers. And 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 if if uh, if I would have listened to Chris, where he's like, yo, like I don't want to sell backpacks, you know, let's focus on hype makers. We would have never done the hype pack, and we would have never done the fire app, and we would have never done this this uh, uh, Hong Kong, you know, possibly three million dollar deal that's coming or where we would have never met this guy that's uh that's gonna that's gonna come in now that's gonna do crazy marketing uh he's like a marketing guru one of these uh six figure he has three six figure stores on shopify i've been trying to get into shopify and into e-commerce for a long time now I, i've talked about it in my in my snapchat sorry my uh yeah even snapchat and instagram stories when i go to china i always talk about all these products about how there's so much movement there's millions of dollars being sold every day in products online and us going to china we have direct access to all these products, so uh, it's 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 like blasphemy that we're not pushing all these products online, and we're only focusing on 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 a company that like Hype Makers. Which don't get me wrong, it's amazing. This year alone, we've done uh, I don't know close to two million in sales. I'm not even supposed to be saying things like that, but whatever. The point is that th there there is a very high potential um, for a Luna, there's a very high potential for a very profitable uh, idea, but never listen to others. Words hurt. Listen to your gut. Whenever people tell you that, take it with a grain of salt and then tell them, fuck you. I'm going to start my idea because you know what's going to happen? Sorry about that cursing. Um, you know what's going to happen is 10 years from now, when that person hasn't done anything with their life and... They're fucking complaining because you haven't done anything with your life. And they're like, yo, but I wanted to do that idea. I wanted to start that business. I wanted to, to sing that song. I wanted to start that little doggy uh, daycare. And you said, no, that's a dumb idea. And they killed your dream. And guaranteed, guaranteed, look him in the eye when I'm telling you this. Guaranteed, if you listen to your friends and you don't follow your dreams, Pay attention. Luna, why are you so hyper? It's two o'clock in the goddamn morning. If you listen to your friends and you don't follow your dreams, you are going to regret it. It's better to try and then regret than to never try and wonder what if. So what's next on my list? Getting to working towards your things. Hold each other and yourself accountable. First thing you gotta do in order to reach your goals is find a buddy that has a similar goal and you gotta hold each other accountable. You gotta hold yourself accountable too. Hold each other accountable and make sure that they are weekly by weekly progressing on their results, on their goals, and make sure that they do, they reciprocate that with you. That they tell you, hey, how are you doing on your goals? Did you start working out? Did you start that project? Did you start learning how to dance? Did you start learning how to make suits? My best friend, I've been telling him for at least at least 10 years. I've been telling him, yo, you gotta start your own business. You gotta start your own business. This is my best friend from high school. We've been together, like we've been friends since, we just went to eat now with him, me and, and, and my girl. And, and like, I'm always with him. And I, I feel like I'm redundant. Every time I, he's been in the banking business for 13 years. And I told him like, yo, like you gotta start your own business. You need a change in your life. like like something has to like uh uh change you know and every time it's like oh i don't know i'm comfortable not that he's comfortable where he's at but he's got so much going on and he's got so much he's got 15 years or 13 years invested in that industry he doesn't just want to give it up but you know the thing is maybe that's an, a, a horrible example but find someone who you can hold accountable and that person can hold you accountable in reaching your goals now drop comments or send me an email i'll try to put it on here on what your idea is what your goals are what you're trying to accomplish what you're trying to learn and i will try to teach you luna i will try to respond to you as soon as i can i don't know how many uh questions i'm gonna get um when i posted something like that on my facebook the other day a bunch of people were like oh i'm gonna tell my cousin to call you i'm gonna be this and if you've called me i haven't answered i'm sorry send me a text and i'll try to answer you as as, as uh, fast as i can but um hold the, each other accountable and like what i was saying about goals my goals are so far-fetched um i want to change the world energy system uh and and if you're interested in that ask me and i'll tell you how i want to do that but I, I think like the biggest necessity in the world is access to clean and renewable energy 
That is the one most important thing that will be able to change an entire world is access to clean and renewable energy, which I think could be from water. Um, but we'll talk about, an, about that in another video. Um, so yeah, drop any comments below. Tell me what you liked about this video. Tell me what you didn't like about this video. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, which I don't even think I have one. Um, I actually do have one, but it's very old. It's from my Lex Graphics, I think. Um, but I think I have a Prince USA one. Just search for Alex Montana YouTube and I'm sure you'll find it. Subscribe to my YouTube because I'm gonna start doing a lot more video logs so that you can share with people. Um, I've been sharing a lot of my things on my stories and if you don't see it in 24 hours, it's over. So it's a, it's a loss for you. I'm gonna try to recompile some of those videos on my on my uh, archives in, in Instagram and I'm gonna try to um, I'm gonna try to uh, put them available on the YouTube channel, maybe at a future date, to see if maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe some of those videos can inspire some people. But um, yeah, comment below, let me know what you wanna hear me talk about. Um, I wanna be empowering people. I wanna be, uh, I'm gonna be talking about wild things too, because I have a really crazy mind. Um, I'm gonna be talking about ideas, and I'm gonna be talking about, uh, I already said weird subjects, that I'm a very, uh, not forward thinker, I'm not left, I'm not right, I'm not center. I'm, 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 I'm in a different, I'm in a different uh, plane. I'm in a different level of understanding and thinking. Um, the things that I think about are like extremely crazy and wild. I'll go, I'll go into it into other, uh, in other videos. Uh, but yeah, comment on below. And now that I'm starting my channel, I wanna know what my viewers are gonna want to look at and what they're gonna want to uh, hear about in my future videos. So thank you for watching and thumbs up sorry for the lighting change i'm already in bed but i wanted to record this and i'm not gonna get up and record that all the way over there because i'm already tucked in um one thing that is very important um you cannot take things to the heart ever don't ever take things to the heart when you get beat down when you get when people you know destroy you with their words when when your goals get crushed or when your dreams get crushed by some fucking unimportant person or something happens where you don't have the money or you lost your your car or or you couldn't make your rent payment none of that matters none of that is going to matter in a year you know you need to you need to know or at least go into it thinking hey um i'm going to i'm going to go into it with my all and I'm not going to expect anything in, in in return, just knowing that you gave it your all. Don't ever let anything affect the way that you uh, that you take things. Take punches straight to the chest and and just like uh, let them go, you know, um, that way. That's going to help you live a very, 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 very happy life. I'm telling you right now, it's not about happy wife, happy life. When you are internally happy, you can make others happy. You know, but if you're not happy, that's that's a problem. That's it.